Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason Newland. This is Stress and Pain Relief a podcast. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Hope you're well. And if you've listened to these particular podcasts before, these recordings, you'll know that they're kind of more of a practical uh, recording, something that it's kind of like a technique that you can use on your own, in your own time, when you've got a spare few minutes. Uh, but of course, you can also listen to me and it might be easier being guided as well. Plus, there's the benefits of listening to me. If you listen regularly, there's that connection between my voice and you feeling relaxed. So there's that uh, instant, it's almost like a, a light switch almost, you know, you press the play button. And if you listen daily, regularly, just press the play button can almost just get you into that zone gets you focused and you expect to feel more relaxed and because you expect to feel more relaxed you ultimately do feel more relaxed so expectations very very powerful thing and it's a very positive thing as well I mean, it works both ways. If you have negative expectations, then it's just as powerful. In fact, the negative is quite often the, the route that us humans generally seem to take. If, un, you know, if, it's, if we don't watch out, you know, that is, if we don't notice and observe those things and decide that actually we're not going to allow negativity to dictate to us how we feel. Because why should we? Why should we? Honestly, if, and it comes from within. If you had a person following you around saying, uh, and you, you, you was thinking, oh, it's, oh, it's gonna be a good day. It's, uh, and the voice is saying, this little person was coming around saying, Oh, it's going to be crap. It's going to be rubbish. You know, you've had to see a movie that you've wanted to see for a while. And it's going, it's going to be rubbish. It's going to be really long. It's going to be boring. It's not going to live up to what you think it's going to be. You'd, at the very least, you'd want that person gone. You'd want to sort of keep your distance from them. But when it's inside your own head, when it's your own voice saying it, First of all, it's way more powerful and has much more of an influence over how we feel because it's our voice, it's our, you know, it's our mind. So what you can do to change that is to actually start to say things to yourself which are positive. And it, I guess it is almost like training your mind. So you, if you had a group, if you had a big group, 20 people that were all negative, all negative, and you went in there, you could like go along with the group and be negative with them. And it's gonna be, it'll be a bit of a struggle to, to deal with that, I imagine. But if you decide to start spreading some positivity you could work on one person and you could start to get them to notice the positive things in their life and that person may start to talk about positive things to other people And then you introduce a new person comes in that's positive. And then another new person 
a couple of weeks later that's more positive. Eventually, that group will change the dynamics. The energy will be different. It will be more positive. So that's kind of socially how we can be sometimes, you know, going along with the the crowd even. And maybe that's what we're like in our own brain. So when it comes to expecting something, we're likely to experience more of what we expect. Now, that brings us to this recording and it brings us to the idea of expecting to feel a real increase in relaxation in a particular part of your body. Okay, so that part of your body can be if you're listening for chronic pain because you've got chronic pain in a particular part of your body or you have excessive stress or tightness or tension in a part of your body. So you can, you, all, you, all you need to do is just choose the part of your body that you're going to focus on. And as you focus on that part of your body, what is your natural feeling? What's your natural expectation? Did you, before you, because when you was listening to me, you weren't focusing on that part of your body. Even if it was only for a few seconds, you were focusing on my voice. And some people listening to, to me during that five minutes that I was talking may have been thinking, what on earth are you talking about? What is this? Is this hypnosis? Is this is this pain relief? Is this stress relief? What is it? You're just waffling on about expectations. What is this a a book review? What what you what are you doing? Well, during that period when you maybe you were thinking that, you weren't experiencing the feeling. You weren't focusing on that part of your body. Maybe you're thinking, oh, this is quite relaxing. I don't know what he's waffling on about, but he's just, yeah, it's quite calm, quite calming. Not really sure, sure where, <laughs> where this is going, but, uh, you know. But even then, you weren't focusing on that part of your body until I said, hey, focus on the part of your body now. And then when you did go to focus on the part of the body, what did you expect to find feeling-wise? I'm guessing you expected to have discomfort. That was your expectation. And if you connect and compare the word expectation to hope, it changes, changes the variables somewhat. Because if you say, oh, I expected, I expected my left foot to be throbbing. And some, would, some people might think, well, okay. They wouldn't question that in that context. But if you said to them, yeah, I hoped that my left leg, my left foot was going to be throbbing. Now that would bring a question up, but why would you hope that? What's wrong with you? Why would you seriously, why would you hope that you have physical discomfort in your in your left foot? Why? But a lot of people would not question the expectations of it. But there's not a huge difference between expecting something and hoping for something. I mean, there's there's a degree of 
optimism connected to hope obviously it's a, it's a it is a powerful word on its own hope you know possibilities uh, connected with love change you know huge things but expectation is a big word as well what's well, this longer than hope isn't it but it's it's a big it's powerful when you consider we are more likely to experience what we expect. And hypnosis is based upon this foundation. This is one of the, almost the tenets of hypnosis, one of the, the basics, basic building blocks of hypnosis and the power of it. In as much as what you expect will have a determinant factor upon how you feel and the results of hypnosis, for example. Even when it comes to, and these studies have been done, I'm not going to list the people because I'm making it up no I'm not going to list the studies because I don't know but I've read studies and it's very well known factually that even things like people going and having surgery now if you if the person the patient expects for the surgery to go well and for themselves to recover fully and quickly, it has a big impact upon their recovery. Now, because of the medical system that we have, uh, especially with the, they call it litigious uh, legal suing of people and stuff the doctors and surgeons have to by law tell the patient about the things that could go wrong and to be you know sort of tell the patient that oh you're going to be in pain and you're going to be this and when not realizing that in that moment that surgeon is the most important person in the patient's life. Above their children, above their parents, their loved ones, even above some, something that's maybe, you know, is, is kind of the highest, most important person at that moment. So the power of that person's words, a surgeon's words, talking to a patient before an operation are more suggestible and more powerful than any hypnotist will ever, ever be able to perform, will ever be able to do. No hypnotist will be as influential to somebody as a surgeon, to a patient who's sitting in bed half an hour away from going and being uh, surgically, you know, having a, uh, an operation. So that patient expects certain things. Now, if the, if the surgeon says, this is going to happen, however, the, you know, the, uh, you're going to be okay. You're going to wake up and that pain that you had before or that you have now won't be, it'll be a different pain because of the surgery, but it won't be the same sharp pain that you currently have. So if someone goes in to have an operation for appendicitis and they've got proper full-on grumbling appendix and they're in agony. When they come out of surgery, they won't have anywhere near the pain that they had before. It will be painful because they just had their stomach opened up. I've had my appendix out, so I know a little bit about this. 
but it won't be anywhere near the pain that they had before. Now, if you tell someone that before they go and have an operation, they're going to feel so, they'll be looking forward to having it done. And when they wake up, they're going to be looking for that pain. They're going to be, oh, it's not there anymore, thankfully. And yeah, they can't move without being in pain. But it's not what it was. So expectations are so powerful. So powerful. And sometimes it, Andre's come, come and to say hello. Hello, Andre. Sometimes we need to have a bit of faith. We need to have a little bit of, when it comes to believing that something's going to be okay. When it comes to really having a bit of trust for example in me listening to these recordings and that's part of the reason why I go a bit more in depth into what I'm doing or why I'm doing it instead of just saying you're going to feel this way and you're going to feel that way I like to talk to you as a human being that's intelligent and explain what I'm doing but also why I'm doing it so you can realize the power that you have inside you that's always there it's always available to you you always got that ability for those changes to occur in an instant. But you know, it's a little bit like, you know when they say uh, a singer has overnight success. Hardly anybody has overnight success. They might suddenly become famous out of nowhere, but they've been working hard at it for years sometimes, like 10 years maybe, and then a singer or an actor gets their big break. Well, we've been working at this for years. You know, if you're, however old you are, if you're 40 or 50 or even 20, you've had many, many years of learning how to feel things. So... These expectations is, you know, it's something that we've been doing all our lives. It's not a new thing. We expect things to be a certain way. We build things up. We knock things down. You know, we're always expecting certain things to happen. Whether or not we're aware of how powerful expectations are on our own lives is something that I guess I don't know only you can answer that but from now f now onwards even if it has been boring listening to me talking about this you're not going to forget it this is going to stick in your mind. And it's a nice thing to be stuck in your mind. We are affected by our expectations. Our expectations affect our enjoyment of certain things. 
if you go to do something and you really believe it's going to be beautiful, it's going to be wonderful, it's like, you know, you're really excited, you're going to have a really good time. And that's one of the problems if you think uh, someone that's, uh, let's say, depressed or a negative person, let's say, just a generally a, quite a negative person. No one's negative all the time, but we've all met people that are what you would class as quite a negative person. Now, they expect the worst. Therefore, that's what they see. That's what they notice. They notice negative stuff. They focus on the bad side of life. They know, yeah, focus, you know, they might have yeah, they, literally they might have a big meal, a big plate of chips, for example, a big plate of chips with I don't know, maybe 30 chips or 30 fries on the plate. But they'll notice the one that's got a bit of black in it, a bit of black, like, um, potato, I don't know what they call it, but you know what sometimes fries have. They'll notice that bit. Well, sometimes it's blue. Or they may be in a top restaurant having the most amazing night with their partner. And all they can notice is there's a stain on the on the cloth on the table. It's a little stain. Now chances are that person, before they went out, expected for things to be crappy expected to find fault with the restaurant expected the plate of chips or fries to be not up to scratch so the power of expectation is huge bigger than i can even really explain it is as I said, the groundwork of hypnosis, it's almost at its core. Well, you could you could pair it with belief, I suppose. But belief is a different kind of thing. Belief is something that I think with things like hypnosis, um, it comes from experience. You can't teach someone that kind of belief. They need to have experienced it to believe that hypnosis works. Um, but you can have expectations, positive expectations, based on how you've heard other people talk about it. Um, things like meditation, for example you can have high expectations that if you do some meditation for the first time that your mind will calm and that you'll enjoy it you won't believe that you'll enjoy it not really because that belief has to come from experience so i think maybe sometimes we get muddled up between the words belief and expectation or wish you know we want it to be good i really want to feel relaxed and calm when i sit down and meditate for the first time i really want it and then there's that need i need it which is also really powerful and some people just having the need is enough but need can be cancelled out sometimes by other people telling them that they must do it. So someone may need to listen to this recording to relax 
able to really calm down a part of your body. You may need that. Even though your whole body and mind gets calmed down when you listen to me. But you may need that. You may want it. You may even expect it. But if someone's telling you that you must do it, there's a chance that there'll be that almost anti kind of uh, defensiveness that goes in. So as with anything, it needs to be because you want to do it. That's the most important thing. It needs to come from you. So expectations, expectations. So what are your expectations regarding how your, the part of your body that you focused on earlier, what are your expectations on how it's going to feel now? How relaxed it's going to feel? Do you expect it to feel more relaxed? So what we can do, we can just practice, we can we can pretend even if, it, if that's what's needed. I'm going to count down from 10 down to 1. I want you to focus on that part of your body that you want to really relax deeply and let go of any physical discomfort completely out of that part of your body. Now, I want you to pretend that this is going to work, okay? To yourself, just expect it to work. Why wouldn't it? I've been doing this for over 15 years, so, you know, I must know something. I must have helped some people to still have an audience. So that's got to come into play a little bit. And I'd have to be really bored if I was still doing this and no one was listening. <laughs> That'd have to be it'd have to be something wrong with me. So I'd like you to pretend to expect that as I count down from 10 to 1, as you focus on that part of your body, it will become more relaxed and expect it to become more relaxed. Just expect it, just really expect it to happen. And just see what happens. So I'm going to do it now, I'm going to count down now. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two. One. Now notice how that felt. Just 
listening to me counting down. I'm not saying any other words, just the numbers. Counting down with that expectations of that part of your body really letting go. Really letting go. So this time we can do another test. And this test will be counting down from 10 to 1 again. But this time we're going to expect. You're going to expect for that part of your body to start to fill up with a sense of healing. A sense of relaxation and a healing energy. Whatever that feels like to you. Okay, so just, it's going to be a sensation. But it's going to be a pleasant relaxing, calming sensation. And I want you to expect this feeling to occur. Really expect it. Expect it as strongly as you expect to go to bed at night and wake up and there's light, you know? The sun's out. Even if it's cloudy, there's light. Or to press a, you know, the light switch and the light comes on. It all happens so quickly, but in our brain, we expect it to happen. Because if you press a light switch and the light doesn't come on, it's a shock. The bulb might have gone or, the, you know, whatever. But it's like, oh, for a moment, there's utter confusion. Because we so strongly expected the light to just come on by pressing the light switch. So as we get ready to count down from 10 to 1, I'm also going to add the words filling up with healing energy. And just notice how that happens. Expect it to happen. Really expect it to happen. Now, focus on that part of your body. Ten. Filling up with healing energy. Nine. Filling up with healing energy. Eight. Filling up with healing energy. Seven. Filling up with healing energy. Six, filling up with healing energy. Five, filling up with healing energy. Four, Filling up with healing energy. Three. Filling up 
with healing energy. Two. Filling up with healing energy. One. Filling up with healing energy. Noticing how you felt whilst I was saying those words, counting down. How did it feel? How do you feel now? And I realize that you may have found yourself drifting. And that's okay because the healing is operating. Your own internal powers of healing and relaxation are processing within you. And it's not just that, there's also the connection between how you feel relaxed and calm and also how you're feeling about the future, how you are expecting to feel more relaxed in the coming days, not just in the area that we've focused on, the part of your body we've focused on, changed also, we're going to be noticing that increased optimism, increased optimism, when you start to think about things and ways that you wish to feel, Knowing that you'll also expect to every time you hear my voice, listen to a recording, watch a video of me, you feel more relaxed, almost. Instantly calm, loose. It's as if everything just lets go. You let go of everything, and it can feel sometimes like you, you know, you're about to listen to this recording. Maybe you felt like you were holding lots and lots of bags of shopping or a big bag of stuff, you know. And then you just let it go. You let it all drop to the floor. 
and that relief, instant relief that you feel in your fingers, your hands, your arms, your shoulders, your back, your chest, your neck. And then you sit down and that relief instantly as your feet relax and your legs relax, your hips relax. And you know as you're walking maybe towards your front door that you're going to experience this sense of relief. You expect it. You look forward to it. And it happens. Every time you have that instant relief. And it feels wonderful. Really does feel wonderful. Because you expect to have that feeling. Just as you can expect to feel more comfort and release in whichever part of your body you choose so that you can feel happier and you can enjoy your life more relaxed and calm physically and mentally relaxed and calm. And that brings us to the end of this recording. Thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself. Andre is just coming. Bless him. You deserve to be happy. Do something nice for yourself today. Now take care. Lots of love.